Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve 17 editing tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do basic motion tracking. Now if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. Also if you want to see some awesome behind the scenes content of projects that I'm working on, check out my social media accounts, the links will be in the description below. So in this video I'm going to be going over two different types of motion tracking. I'm going to be going over the point tracker and I'm going to be going over the planar tracker. The difference between a point tracker and planar tracker is the point tracker is a single 2D point that tracks contrast objects. So if the lighting conditions change or if the perspective shifts, you risk the 2D point drifting away and losing the tracking detail. A planar tracker gives you more advanced tracking and more of an accurate result than a point tracker. So a lot of the time you may want to be using a planar tracker instead of a point tracker, but it's great to know how to use both of them just in case one of them works better than the other. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve 17 and let's start motion tracking. Okay, so I've opened up DaVinci Resolve 17. So I've got three clips here. Uh, this first one's like handheld movements. Just because there's not a lot of details on the ground here, I actually put my camera bag in the middle of it just because there's a good contrast point there for motion tracking. The second clip is a perspective change where I've got this card with contrast points. It's just basically, it's one of those color data charts thing and there's like some good contrast points on there. That's why I've used it for this example. And then I've got a third clip here that I'm actually going to be showing you how to do some motion tracking inside of the color tab as well. So let's go to the first clip and let's open up Fusion because the first two clips we're going to be using Fusion to do some motion tracking. So we've got our media in and media uh, one out and what we want to do is we want to track. So the first track I'm going to show you is the point tracker. Now this is a very simple way to add text in very quickly to your video clip and some basic motion graphics overlay stuff. So to access the track point, I'm just going to click on our media in one and I'm going to hold shift and space and I'm going to type in track and we want this tracker right here. Now, if you've used After Effects before, this is going to look very similar to how you do some point tracking inside of After Effects. You've got your box where you do a lot of the tracking and then you want the crosshair to be on the point that you want to track. So with this camera bag, there's a little bit of a handle loop where you can see a bit of white in the middle and this is going to be a very good tracking point for us to use. And then we've got our um, box here where we want it to search for our area that we want to track. And then we, we can adjust the size of the search area. And then we've got this other search area just in case um, uh, the tracker loses this part, it can actually look for it in the bigger window for a better, more accurate track. So I'm happy where this is and I'm actually going to track this forward. So we've got two different ways to track. I've started on the very first frame, so I'm just going to be tracking forward. So you can track frame by frame if you want to or you can analyze the whole clip and um, get it to track all the way through. So I'm just gonna analyze it forward. And as you can see, it's doing a really good job at finding our tracking point. Cool, our render is complete. And then now let's play this back. We can see that our tracking point stays onto uh, the part of the clip that we want to track. All right, so we've tracked our clip and now I'm going to bring in some text. I'm going to click and drag our text. I'm just going to get a basic text in. I'm just going to uh, hit one on my keyboard just so I can see a preview of it. And I'm just going to type in motion tracking. And we can't see anything on our uh, media out just because we haven't connected it just yet. And I'm just going to adjust the size. I might change the fonts. So the really cool thing about using the point tracker is it also acts as a merge layer because normally when you add text into your footage inside of the Fusion tab, you actually have to have a merge node to um, be able to preview it on your clip. So I'm just going to connect this to our foreground, which is our green arrow. 
um, and at the moment you cannot see anything and we need to do one more thing in our tracker node so we can see our text and that's to go over to operation and we're going to change our operation from none to match move so now you'll see our text and when we play it back it is following the motion of our tracking point if you want to adjust the positioning of the text you know you can do it over here if you want to or you can um, add a transform node uh, let's go transform and we can put that in between the text and our merge node and then we can you know adjust the positioning of it even the size um, angle as well that's how you use the point tracker inside of the fusion tab so now let's go to the other clip and I'm going to show you how to use the planar tracker so I'm just going to go back to the edit tab and I'm just going to go over to our um, second clip over here and I'm just going to go over to the fusion tab so we're in the fusion tab now and we're going to start tracking so I'm just going to select our media in one and I'm going to click shift and space and I am just going to type in track again and then now I'm going to choose the planar tracker. So I've added my planar tracker and the first thing you want to do is we'll just find a reference point. I'm going to start at about here and I'm just going to click. I'm just going to make a shape around the point that we want to track. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to set our reference time. So I'm going to click set and that's just going to take us back to this frame when we're analyzing just because we're not at the beginning of our uh, frame as well. And you always need to set your reference time every time you use the planar tracker. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at track for now. And I'm going to change our tracker points to hybrid point area. I'm gonna leave our motion type to perspective, leave the output to background, uh, track channel to luma. The reason why I'm leaving it at perspective is because when I'm playing it back, you can see the object is shifting around and that's our perspective so i'm just going to uh, track forward it's very similar to how you'll do this in point tracker so i'm just going to analyze forward and as you can see that the uh, perspective of this card is shifting as well so now when we move forward you can see that it's still sticking really well to our tracking card that we're using here so what we can do is we actually when we play this back you can see that it doesn't stick to the beginning of our footage and to fix that this is why you create the reference frame or the reference time is you can just click go and that will take you back to our reference frame right here and then i'm just going to track backwards and then i'm going to analyze the clip to the beginning of our clip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the media pool and I'm just going to drag my image in. Since I want the perspective to shift, I'm actually going to right click and click and drag onto our planar tracker and I'm going to change it to corner pin. And then I'm going to change our operation mode from track to corner pin. We can just click and drag our clip over because we've already created our tracking points. Now we can roughly put our image onto our card right here. Let's just bring it there. There we go. And then now when we play it back, it will stick to our card. This is very good for phone screen replacements or TV screens. And as you can see, our image is now stuck to our clip. So I decided to go back to the first clip because I'm going to show you how to use the planar tracker in a different way if you're not using a perspective shift or a screen replacement and you want to add text and it and you want it to do a very similar thing to um, a point tracker um, just because sometimes with point trackers you may lose some of the details with bigger motion and all of that sort of stuff so I'm just going to hit shift space and we're going to type in planar tracker and we're going to open that up and um, I'm just going to create the point. Um, I might use the background. So I'm just going to create some points over here. The bigger the area, the better the track will be. So I've got quite a lot of detail in this bit of frame right here. So I'm going to keep it at track. I'm going to set our reference frame. 
And I'm gonna change the motion type. This is where um, you can play around with and make sure you're getting the correct track. For this sort of stuff, I'm gonna keep this at translation and rotation just because the camera is staying where it is and it's just going up and down, left and right, you know, and then there might be some slight rotation. So that's why um, I chose translation and rotation. But if you're doing um, a parallax camera, side to side movement, you may want to have um, perspective or if you're doing a dolly in, you might want to have the translation and rotation. But if you're moving in closer to an object, you may want to have the scale option as well. So for this type of movement, it's just translation and rotation. And I'm just going to analyze forward. And now it's creating a lot of points to track. And that's looking good. Cool. And then I'm going to go to go. It's going to go back to our reference frame. And then I'm going to um, track backwards just so we get the whole clip tracked. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a planar transform. I'm going to click that and that creates a new node over here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a merge node. I'm going to click and drag and hold shift. Then we've got our text that we have from before. So I'm just going to click and drag and bring our text into planar transform and then I'm going to bring the output of planar transform into the foreground of the merge node and then now we've got our motion tracking data so it's doing the same thing the point tracker as well but you're getting a bit more of an accurate result you know you're getting the translation of the up and down left and right movements and you're also getting that um, rotation as well so it makes it look like it's sticking to image much better so that's how you do motion tracking inside of the Fusion tab. If you're doing, you know, um, tracking text or doing some sort of graphics or visual effects sort of stuff, um, this is the best way to do motion tracking inside of the Fusion tab in Resolve. Now I'm going to go over to our final clip and I'm going to show you some basic similar tracking inside of the Color tab. Okay, so I'm in the final clip and I want to do some motion tracking inside of the color tab just so I can isolate certain parts of the image. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the part of the image that I want to affect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our window and I'm just going to click on our power window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip for this one. I'm just going to resize this. So I'm just going to put this power window on our um, actor's face. I might just leave it a little bit wider and I'm going to go over to the next window and I'm going to go over to tracker and I'm going to make sure that we're on cloud tracker and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to track forward and now it's um, tracking her face. And then now I'm just going to um, see what we've tracked. So now when we um, do any adjustments we can um, you know make her face brighter um, and then we can just uncheck that so now we can see we can see now that we've affected it and when we play this back the power window follows along maybe we want to affect everything around her face and we want to keep her face um, just like that we can also uh, go back to our power window we can invert it so now when we go back to see it's going to affect this area except her face so let's just change the gamma to just something ridiculous so you can see this better. So now when we uh, play this back, you can see that it's tracking to her face. We can of course go and adjust like the feather as well. This is really good for color grading or you can actually use this for certain effects as well. So I'm just going to reset our primaries wheels. So another really um, good way to use this effect is you can um, Use this to blur people's faces. So if somebody doesn't want to be in your film and you shot a really nice clip and that person, you know, walked through, you can track their face and you can blur them out pretty quickly. So to do that, um, it's very simple. So I'm just going to make sure that we are not inverted. So we're just going to be affecting the person's face. Um, I'm just going to go over to our blur and I'm just going to push this all the way up. So now, we've got an anonymous face. So yeah, that's how you do basic motion tracking inside of DaVinci Resolve. 
inside of the fusion tab and also the color tab. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads.